Good morning and welcome to the Shelter in Place show. Day two, March 26, 2020. My name's Ben. This is Rebecca. We are overland travelers in that 4x4 expedition vehicle behind us. And we are sheltering in place here at a location we are calling Rancho Fortuito on the Baja California Peninsula. <laughs> So this is a little bit of a deviation from our usual videos and definitely our travel, but like everyone, we are making the most of the situation. Before we get started with today's video, we want to be sure to send you guys over to outliersoverland.com, our website, with a lot of resources for travelers and information you might enjoy while you're sheltering in place. Coming up in this episode, we have some dirty chores to do, like dumping our excrement. And I'm gonna share with you how to protect yourself by making homemade hand sanitizer using really simple ingredients. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode because we have a very special segment we're adding. I've reached out to fellow international overlanding travel people around the world, and they are gonna be sending in video clips about what's happening in their area. We really feel strongly that information and reality is key and look forward to sharing this with you. Now jumping right into our first topic of the day, how prepared were we for the coronavirus? And that's an interesting question to ask because as overlanders in a small rig, we don't exactly have a lot of room. At home in Alaska, we have months of food and supplies at our house, but this is our storage space where we keep everything that doesn't fit in the main compartment of the truck and having months worth of food, toilet paper, water is not really practical. So you can see here that we've stocked up on some toilet paper. We have about 10 gallons worth of water on board, uh, as drinking well as drinking water on board. Um, we normally only carry about four rolls of toilet paper at a time and we have quadrupled that. <laughs> Um, so it's been kind of interesting. Basically, when we started hearing rumblings about, you know, potential shelter in place orders, we started adding a little bit to the truck each time we stopped at the grocery store. And we made some special trips to town and picked up things that we knew we would need or that it sounded like other places were running out of. We're feeling pretty comfortable at this point and trying to limit our trips to town or to the grocery store as much as absolutely possible. But right now I think we feel pretty comfortable with what we have on board. Aside from food and consumable goods, I feel we are very prepared in this vehicle. We've been uh, in this rig for about 20 months and have worked out so many of the kinks and know the items that we need to carry spares of. We have fishing gear, we have heater hoses for the coolant lines, we have an extra food box there. We have uh, boots for winter type of uh, clothing. So just a whole handful of things that kind of fall right in line when you are uh, full-time traveling in a vehicle. So just as Ben prepared us for truck emergencies with spare parts, maintenance items, extra tools, all the things we might need to keep the truck going, Given my medical background, I am the chief medical officer on board and I prepared us for medical emergencies. If you're curious about the details of what exactly we have packed in our toolbox and our go bag, we made a video right before we left Alaska this winter and detailed out everything we carry. But uh, I feel, short of being in a hospital, we have just about everything we would need for emergencies out on the road or when we're stationary like this. For those of you who followed our channel for a while, you're pretty familiar with our truck Denny here, but I'll give you a brief overview. This is a very well prepared vehicle. It's a 2007 Mitsubishi Fuso FG140 truck chassis with a fully self-contained camper box. This is one could call it a zombie apocalypse vehicle. We can get to those hard to reach places. We have ridiculous fuel range between our uh, tanks and the efficiency of the engine. And for this situation, we made sure to have enough fuel on board so we could make a run to the US border. And 
Under the most ideal circumstances, we have about 800 miles of range. Well, here we are sharing real life with you, so please disregard the clutter. We've gotten pretty comfortable since we've been in one spot for a few days now. Uh, as Ben mentioned, we have a fully self-contained rig ready to be off-grid at all times. So that means we have 520 watts worth of solar on the roof. They feed and charge 300 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries. And then we have a 2000 watt inverter to convert to AC power for charging things. Moving to the other side, we don't drink the water out of our tank. We leave that to be uh, so that we can get water from anywhere to wash dishes and shower with. And then we purchase water from purification centers and we have this awesome little pump so you can just fill your bottle or your cup whenever you want. Over here we have our 12 volt refrigerator. When you put it down, it's the other side of the dinette. Now moving into our fully equipped kitchen, we have a Wallace diesel stove, which when left in the down position is a heater, when in an up position is a stove top, of course, in these climates, we are not needing a heater at this time. We also have a freezer here. It's 12 volt, just like our refrigerator. And then our kitchen sink also doubles as our bathroom sink. Back here, we have our bedroom slash living room, day bed, night bed, TV. And lastly, on board, we have our wet bath with shower and cassette toilet. We hold 40 gallons of fresh water and have a five gallon hot water tank on board. Well, as you can tell, this is a pretty amazing vehicle to have in trying times like these. Now it's time for some chores. This is a cassette toilet, kind of like yeah, a very fancy porta potty. We hold about four gallons of fresh water all in its own unit. And then when it comes time to empty it, we just slide the entire cassette out. There's definitely a little bit of technique when it comes to dumping this toilet, and there have been lessons learned the hard way, but it's not too difficult. A little pressure relief valve, give it a little shake here and there, and it never hurts to do an extra rinse. If this is the sole facilities that both Rebecca and I are using, it lasts three days. But since this is a controlled environment and I can dump whenever, I prefer to do it every other day because if it gets full, it gets messy. Easy enough. Well, if this isn't a perfect segment from a dirty job to a sanitary solution, let's make some homemade hand sanitizer. All you need to make this are a couple of ingredients you probably had at home before the coronavirus started. First being aloe vera gel, and second being rubbing alcohol. If you'd like, you can add a little bit of essential oil so it smells good. The last couple of things you're going to need are a vessel to put your hand sanitizer in, and FYI, this is not a ketchup bottle. This is our homemade hand sanitizer bottle, ketchup for the cabin, mustard for the truck. It was the best we could do in Mexico. When you travel tiny, you don't carry extra bottles with you. Lastly, a measuring cup. So to properly protect yourself from the coronavirus, you want something that is over 60% alcohol. So today we are going to make 66% alcohol by using one part aloe, two parts alcohol. You do the math, it's pretty easy. And for the sake of simplicity, we are going to use the metric side and make 60 mLs of hand sanitizer. 20 of the aloe vera. And ideally you wanna pour this out separately so you get accurate measurements, but 40 mLs of alcohol. So just stir the ingredients together until they're fully mixed and pour into whatever vessel you have to use for your hand sanitizer. Last step, if you would like to, add a few drops of your favorite essential oil smell. Lastly, just shake it up and now you have your hand sanitizer. Now it's time to check in with our fellow overland travelers from around the world. 
Our first segment comes from Paul of The Off Grid Nomad UK. You can check him out on YouTube and Instagram. Good morning, guys, in the UK. Um, I'm a fairly new overlander, just started. Um, just before all this outbreak started, we're sort of touring the UK. Um, got my kids with me. There's one, and one just getting out of the truck at the moment to support the dog. Uh, it's Thursday, the 26th of March. Um, we've just now come into lockdown uh, into the UK, and uh, just waiting to see what's going to happen. Now we're in a in a place sort of parked up. It, it's quite a tourist spot. And uh, yeah, we we did have a little police visit yesterday, saying about moving. Um, so we're going to see what happens today. Let's hope things are okay. Everywhere else, we're seeing a lot of friends all over the all over Europe and stuff being trapped and getting moved. Um, we've actually sort of done a little self isolation. We actually found some cones in the distance there. As you can see, just back there, we blocked this little road off. This it's a dead end we're on. Um, and some of these campers are going. These are all full full timers, um, and there's a few other YouTubers there as well. Um, but we live in this area. We're in the sort of the Peak District, it's sort of central UK at the moment. But places like Scotland and Wales, like, um, vigilante groups are being setting up. Um, threatening campers, anyone, you know, overlanders and everything. We've got friends up in Scotland and they've been threatened to have the vehicle set on fire from the locals. So it's scary times all over. So I'll turn you around and you can see where we are. Here we go, just a little view. Where we are. At least we get some lovely views. We're sort of really self-isolating. The kids are uh, using the Wi-Fi, doing the schoolwork inside, and come out when it's when there's no one around. This is my truck. It's a ex-military DAF, four before, it's just been fully built. Uh, LGF conversion on the back commercials. It's the first one they've done. So anything then got like bigger tanks and things. So we're pretty self-contained. We're okay for a sort of good three months. I'm working on it while I'm here. I've got all the tanks to cover up and paint and wrap up and so yeah, we're getting we seem to be better off than vans because Police and everyone keeps us in driving past us. They must think we're maybe military still. <laughs> so, but yeah, I hope everyone else, so I hope everyone around the world is parked up safe. I have seen a few incidents. Um, I think there's someone in Africa. There's about 14 overlanders. They were getting a lot of hassle and getting told to move. But where can we move to? If you live full time in your truck, where can we move to? And um, this is our argument. So they just want, you know, there's no point in pushing you out into the middle of nowhere. We've just, started, it was about four or five of us here and we we're all just sort of basically staying together, distancing ourselves, but as a support network, just in case anything does happen. We've got some vulnerable females with us, solo females. So, you know, we're just basically looking after each other in these, you know, crisis times. We don't know if it's going to go much bigger. You know, it's it's one of the things, the whole reason I've had to pick my children up is to self-isolate them. All my family I can go to are all got health issues. Uh, even my ex-wife, that's why I've got my children. Um, I'm protecting them. She has lung problems. And if she catches it, you know, it could be fatal. So it's, we've had to, you know, self-isolate ourselves in the middle of nowhere. So, all right, guys. That's off with Nomad signing off. Um, I will, I'm doing sort of few few vlogs on my page, on, you know, my channel now and again. So, I'm not doing too many just in case we do have some vigilantes come up here. But 
might release them after all this has happened. And so here we go. We'll take care, guys. Everyone around the world, wherever you are. Cheers now. Bye. A closing thought before we wrap this video up. Today, we want to be sure to thank all of the healthcare providers out there who are putting themselves on the front line, making themselves vulnerable in order to take care of those who are affected by the coronavirus. We want them to know we haven't forgotten about you. We're sending good positive vibes and very grateful for what you're doing for the world right now. And if you have someone in your circle of friends and family who's in healthcare, give them a special thank you. It would really go a long ways. And that's a wrap. Thank you for joining us on day two, March 26, 2020 of our COVID-19 shelter in place show. Uh, we're happy that we can share this stuff with you and be you know, going through this together because that's what we really do need in times like these. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.